Good morning, um, welcome back to my channel. My name is Juliet. Today I just want to do a um, autumn roundup of books that I have recently finished reading, um, books that I am currently reading, um, and books that are on my um, future reading plans. So if we're just looking at really the last couple of months over the summer. Um, and over the, over the last couple of months I have read five novels, um, one non-fiction book and two memoirs. So I start with the novels. The first novel um, I read was The Power by Naomi Alderman and I've just recently posted um, a discussion um, about the power in relation to The Handmaid's Tale which I'll put in the link down below but just to say I loved this novel I really really enjoyed it um, I am always interested in um, near future sci-fi dystopian fiction so you could argue that for men this is definitely a dystopian novel potentially not for women um, and it just really reminded me of a sort of modern version of The Handmaid's Tale. Um, but very briefly, it's about a world where um, women develop a physical power, which means they are then stronger than men. And then the book kind of charts the rise of women and the fall of men. So I strongly recommend that novel. Really, really good read, really good writing. Um, a very broad scope in the novel. So it sort of takes a worldwide perspective. Um, but a really good issue based novel. Second um, novel I read was Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. Um, this is quite a good fun novel. It's um, about again a futuristic world where everyone lives inside a virtual reality environment and the sort of themes are um, the individual against the corporation, the little person against this um, capitalist society basically. Um, it wasn't a five star read for me, it was a good fun read, I did enjoy it. I know it's being made into a film and I actually think it'll probably make a better film than a novel. But certainly a good fun read and if you like gaming and if you like um, near future sci-fi, you'll probably enjoy um, Ready Player One. Um, the next one I read was Revolutionary Road by um, Richard Yates. This was written in the 1950s and it really captures um, American culture um, at that time, um, particularly around how women were feeling trapped inside the home. Um, so again, it's all about gender roles, um, fantastically written. None of the characters are particularly likeable in the novel, but again, it really, really explores the um, impact of gender stereotypes and how they are damaging to both men and women. Um, and I certainly would be looking out for more Richard Yates books to read as a result. Um, and the next one I read was The Hand, The Hand, The Housekeeper and the Professor, which was recommended on um, Britta Bola's channel. Um, and this is written by Oko Akawa. Um, this is a lovely, gentle, lyrical novel. Nothing big happens in it. Nothing terrible happens in it. For me, what I got from it was that it's really um, about accepting what life gives us and seeing the beauty and joy in the very small things. It's about a maths professor who is involved in an accident and as a result his short-term memory only lasts for 80 minutes before it resets itself. And the novel is really about his housekeeper and her son and how, despite his limitations, they still have joy in life. It's a lot of it's around baseball because he loves baseball and so does the son. Um, it's a very soulful book and I think it makes you feel good about human nature afterwards. So a very beautiful, gentle book to read. Um, and finally, I have just finished Ashland and Vine by John Burnside and I saw this recommended I think on Merce's um, booktube channel. I had read The Dumb House and I've done a review of that already and I wasn't hugely impressed with The Dumb House but I know that was an early novel of John Burnside um, and Ashland and Vine is a much more recent novel. I have to say I really enjoyed Ashland and Vine. I'm not really sure what it was about. I'm trying to think about what were the themes in there. I think it's about some of it's about being brave and being courageous versus being cowardly, um, about standing up for your principles. Um, 
it's really about the relationship between an older woman um, and a younger woman and the older woman in a sense saves the younger woman but in some ways the younger woman also saves the older woman um, the younger woman is is a bit of a mess she's a bit lost um, she's grieving she's drinking too much she's kind of not really living her life she's almost on the peripheries of her own life um, and she befriends this older woman um, but this older woman also has stories from her past that she wants to tell um, and she wants to share with the younger woman. There's quite a lot about Vietnam and, and sort of civil rights in there and again the individual versus the state. Um, it was a nice ending, nothing particularly major happened at the ending. I was kind of hoping for some sort of twist or some connection between the two women but that didn't happen but maybe that I was hoping for a different novel. I certainly enjoyed it better than The Dumb House um, but I'm not sure how much whether I would rush out to read another John, John Burnside novel um, but I guess that's just me. So the non-fiction book that I read um, was Neurotribes by Steve um, Silverman and this was a book recommended to me at an autism conference that I attended um, led by Dr Emily Rubin who has um, developed a new way of understanding autism so I was at um, her, her sort of training and her conference and she recommended this is a great um, history of autism and it is it kind of explores um, how autism the concept the conceptualization of autism um, how that itself reduced the amount of cases that you saw because there was a belief that you were only autistic if you also had a very low IQ or you were non-verbal um, and it was discounting all the people with um, average or normal IQs who were verbal but also who had the same core deficits in social communication so it kind of charts the history of discovery um, diagnosis and how the diagnostic criteria has changed over time and it very clearly explains why there's an apparent epidemic of autism in the Western world um, and I know much um, particularly out in America there's been much talk about this epidemic being caused um, by um, vaccines um, by mercury and vaccines by our lifestyle but actually this book kind of clearly explains that autistic individuals have always been around um, in every part of history it's just the way we classified them has changed um, and it, what led Steve Silverman to write this book was the realization that there were lots of people who worked in technology particularly in, in Silicon Valley who had real problems in terms of social communication and so that sort of made him put this book together to really consider why we think there's a rise in autism. Um, for me there wasn't a huge amount of new information there because of my um, profession of educational psychology I already know quite a lot about it but I think um, it's a book that really does kind of put to bed some of the myths around autism, the idea that it's curable um, because actually autism is just a different way of being. It, it kind of looks at neurodiversity and how as humans we've always had humans with these particular sort of traits um, and it celebrates that um, autistic individuals actually are potentially the reason why we have made such advances in science and technology. Um, so a really interesting book to read, pretty pretty heavy going and I know you can get it on Audible and some people have said they prefer to listen to it than to read it but I was quite happy to read it. I then read um, two memoirs. The first one was The Kisses of His Mouth by um, Monique Roffey who um, is an author who has um, been shortlisted for the Orange Prize, I think, for her fiction. This is a memoir of the breakup of a long-term relationship and then the exceptional adventure or odyssey she went on as a result of it. Um, it's a very intellectual, middle-aged, middle-class kind of memoir. Um, it's had some... Some people really have really liked it, some people have not. I've done a separate review on it that you'll find. Um, I'll put a link to that down below. Um, it was enjoyable enough. Um, but I think it was a bit long, it kind of, it felt a little bit repetitive, it was about 450 pages long. Um, and the second memoir I read was My Lovely Wife, a memoir of madness and hope. I can't remember who wrote that now, so I'll probably add that in as a little link. Um, and this is really about um, 
Well, really, it's a journey through a um, diagnosis of mental illness for this man's wife, and then the, the way that they then had to actually adapt their lives to cope with the fact that she um, was mentally ill and would have psychotic breaks. I think after the first psychotic break, they both thought that once she got over it, then everything would be fine again. Then when the second one came along, they, had, they began to realise that this was, this was part of their lives. I think it's a very hopeful book. Um, it has some very dark moments in it, but I think it's a very hopeful book because it kind of shows that you can um, lead a, a, a fulfilling life even when you have mental ill health. And that actually it, it gives some really good points about um, how important it is for someone with mental health difficulties to have a plan in place that they and their family have agreed for when things aren't going well. Um, because the patient's voice often gets very lost in mental illness and other people make decisions for that person. Um, so the book really is their journey through dealing with mental health and actually showing how um, it can be very damaging to a relationship because they both felt put upon. He felt put upon because he had to pick up the pieces every time and when they had a child he then had to look after the child. She felt put upon because she was the one that was ill and she felt like she kept getting wrenched out of her life and put in hospital and whereas he got to carry on with his life she kept having to start again. And the book kind of really says that it's really important that the person with mental health does stay in control of what's happening to them, that they remain connected to the world in some way, um, that they are able to return to work after the episode, um, and how difficult mental health can be on a relationship, but equally how you can come through that. Um, so I think that, you know, particularly if you've ever suffered from mental ill health or know people that have, I think the book is a relatively hopeful one in terms of how to manage um, mental ill health. So what am I currently reading? I've literally just just started The Drum Tower by, I can't remember who wrote that either, Farnoosh Moshini, um, which is on the book a long list or the short list and this is about the Iranian revolution told through the eyes of a 16 year old mentally ill girl um, and I've seen lots of good reviews on that so I'm giving that one a go. Um, I'm also currently listening to um, Adam Bede by George Eliot on Audible and the reason I started listening to Audible books is the first book I've listened to on Audible is because of a, a um, video um, post by Wild Reads where he looked at um, the difference between reading physical books, Kindle and Audible and it got me thinking I've been wanting to read some of the classics for years but I always find other books um, that I end up reading instead. So I thought it might be a really good way for me to listen to some of the classics um, in the car and when I'm running. And I wasn't sure if I would enjoy listening to books this way, but I'm absolutely loving it. Adam Bede is, is narrated by um, someone called G Georgina Sutton. Um, and she's brilliant. She does all the voices for the characters. She makes the dialect really easy to understand. Um, it's a novel about um, English pastoral life in the 19th century um, and involves seduction and betrayal. And it's a really lovely thing to listen to when you're running or you're driving. So I'm definitely hooked now on Audible. Um, and I'm about halfway through Adam Bede and I am absolutely loving it. The characters are really vivid in my head and I think it's because it's being read to me. So definitely I am a new Audible um, convertee. I'm also reading another non-fiction book um, called Playing With The Boys. This is recommended by my son, um, Why Separate Is Not Equal In Sports. And this looks at sex segregation in sport and kind of takes the wider to picture about the fact that if we're sex segregating in sport, that is a, a, a bigger indication of how we're still sex segregating across society. Um, and this book argues that there's no need to sex segregate in sport. Um, that group differences between men and women is not a reason to exclude individual women from taking part in some of the major league sports. The downside of this book for me is that it's um, based on American sport. Um, so it talks about something called a title... Title IX programme that was trying to encourage girls in sport and obviously it doesn't, doesn't necessarily relate to the UK and how we, we're tackling um, girls participation in sport in the UK. But I just wanted to read you a little paragraph that, I, that really hit home to me, the problems of sex segregation in sport and... and oh, I'll read you the paragraph and you'll get the hang of it. So, this book argues that coercive or forced sex segregation in sports should be called out for what it is a violation of the 14th Amendment's Equal Protection Clause. The policy premise in sports should be neutral as to sex classification, just as it is neutral on the issue of race classification. 
The only qualifications for playing sports, therefore, should be those related to an individual's abilities to play, not attributes stereotypically assigned to the sex or race group to which the individual belong, belongs. And then it gives a, a really good example using race to show how absurd sex segregation is in sport. Yes, African American men have excelled in professional basketball leagues. But this does not mean that an individual white man should be coerced to play on a race segregated white basketball league on the grounds that white men as a group are less talented than black men as a group when it comes to playing professional basketball. To the contrary, all sports competitions should be based on the abilities of the individuals who seek to play, not on stereotypical attributes of sex or race groups. So the book is basically arguing that sex segregation in sport is actually just a, a symptom of the wider problem we have with um, sex segregation in lots of areas of society. I've only just started it and I potentially will do a review of it when I have finished it. So that's what I'm currently reading. So what I am planning on reading over the next couple of months, there's so many. Well, since I've joined um, Booktube, I have got so many, many books that I want to read. Um, which is fantastic um, because <clears throat> it also is making me read books that I maybe might not have picked up if I hadn't seen the reviews by other people or recommendations for other people. So it's really um, broadening my reading taste as well, which is great. So on my list of things to read, I'm going to listen to Rebecca on Audible by Daphne de Maurier. It's another book that I've seen lots of um, booktubers talk about, Wild Reads have talked about it. Um, <clears throat> and I really want to read it but never get round to it, so that's my next Audible book when I get my, my credit for next month. I'm really excited about reading um, The Storyteller by Kate Armstrong, who is another booktuber. I think the book's just come out, actually, um, and it looks really, really interesting, and I love Kate Armstrong's um, reviews. I find I've got quite similar taste to her in terms of reading, um, and I always enjoy looking at her reviews um, and then assessing whether I agree with them or not. So I can't wait to read the book, a book that she has written. I'm sure it'll be absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm also planning on reading a book called The Tryst by Monique Rothy, who was the author of the memoir around the sexual adventure that I mentioned. This is apparently a novella, an erotic fiction novella about love, sex and marriage. And I get the sense that this novella, written five years after the memoir, is potentially um, sort of the culmination of the memoir, um, and her past experience is all brought together into a piece of fiction. So in some ways I think I might enjoy the twist more than in the memoir, but I'll let you know. Um, I'm also going to be reading Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman, which has been recommended on Mercy's channel, Cook We Create channel, um, and this is about a socially awkward young woman, so I really like the sound of that. Um, I'm going to also read The Growing Season by Helen Sedwich because it's dystopia and I absolutely love dystopia and Britta Bowler recommended that and again I find I have quite similar taste to Britta Bowler in terms of novels so I've got a feeling I'm going to really enjoy that. Um, I've also got to read Elmet um, which was on the Booker um, shortlist um, because I think by Fiona Mosley. I've had so many booktubers talk about how good it is including Ink and Paper Blog, Mercy's um, Books and Wild Reads. So I really want to give Elmet a go. Um, and finally, a, a memoir that I would like to read is Hunger by Roxane Gay, which again, a lot of booktubers have talked about. It looks quite harrowing. It's about um, the aftermath of gang rape on the author in terms of how she then viewed her body, how she viewed feud, um, and how she moved on with her life and that's been strongly recommended by Heidi on My Reading Life by Mercy's um, Booktube channel <clears throat> so that's definitely on my list to read. What I might read or I might not is Exit West um, which is also a um, shortlist on the booker um, and I'm a bit torn about this one because on Kate Armstrong's channel she didn't rate it at all, she didn't enjoy it but another booktuber who I watch APDI um, bookworm, um, a lovely lady called Missy, she absolutely loved Exit West. So I've got two booktubers that I often agree with in terms of books <clears throat> and they think very different things about Exit West. So I kind of feel like I want to read it to find out which booktuber I align with, but I may not get around to it because I'm not sure about it now. So I think that's my wrap up or round up done for autumn. I will do another one again, I think after Christmas, so I can do a winter round up. 
Um, I'm really looking forward to all the exciting books I've got to read. As I said, Booktube has been incredible in introducing me to loads of new authors and loads of new books. Um, and it's a great community to be part of. So, if you like this kind of roundup idea, please do subscribe to my channel um, or give this video a thumbs up. And I will be back again soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye bye.